Welcome to Local Distortion. On this podcast, I'll be talking to the best up-and-coming independent artists and bands. I'm your host, Daniel Kirk. My guests this week are standing like statues. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Would you like to introduce yourselves? I'm Nigel. I play the guitar. I'm Beth. I play bass and I sing. I'm Jamie and I'm the singer. I'm Mater. I play guitar and look awkward. (laughs) (laughs) Yours is about the best description and the most close to the truth. Thanks, Beth. You're welcome, man. Such a good friend. So where did you guys all meet? Uh, so me, uh, Beth and Mater went to Impington school together. Me and Jamie knew each other when we were four. Yeah. Oh, wow. He's a child mind me. <laughs> and he moved to South End and came back to Cambridge. Went to some random school. Went to any random school and he just happened to be there. Yeah, we met right. in change rooms for PE. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So how did, how did you lot meet Nige and... Uh, so we would We'd been a band, uh, us three had been a band since the age of like 13, 14. And, oh God, it was horrendous, the music we made. I think <laughs> some of that stuff is still on MySpace. And I'm probably going to regret yes. saying that in case people look for it. Um, well, no, I'm going to try and look for it now. <laughs> what, what are those bands called? We're wearing... Uh, <laughs> it's like, still on my what, dad's Facebook as well. The things that, like, I had a tight blue, electric blue skinny jeans and yellow high top trainers. And pink it was fringe. emo. Yeah. And pink fringes. So, the, the so it was the definition of emo. You were you one of those bands who was just loud and proud? Well, it was mainly Jamie. This is what we are, because a lot of <laughs> bands yeah, don't. Yeah, they yeah. play the music, wouldn't they? But they wouldn't admit the genre. Would yeah. they? We definitely would admit the genre and what we were doing. But I would say it was much more the secondhand serenade esque mm. kind of vibe to it as well, where it was softer. It, it was, was more pop, rocky side was, of emo. Yeah. It was so cheesy emo. Mm. Yeah, mm. cheesy. It was cheesy. Yeah. But but we loved it, and that's what we did love at it. that at that yeah. time. That's yeah. that's what our hearts said, yeah. isn't it? Well, I think it definitely also meant that we are now back together playing music with each other because we're good at it and we like it. Yeah. We enjoy yeah. making music together. Yeah. And then uh, Nigel. Yeah. It's a bit of a weird story. I actually <laughs> saw these guys. And it's like well, they're probably there like second or third gig. Mm. That man on me. <clears> I didn't have a clue who they were. Yeah. And then like four years later. I get introduced to them and I'm playing the band with them. And then it twigs that you guys, when I saw a picture or something, Jamie's really curly hair. I was just like, so you guys, I, actually, I remember that now. Yeah. <laughs> That's just, yeah, it's, a, it's just a bit of a small world. Me and Mary have been playing music constantly in bands yeah. with each other since school. And then I, I, these, and then Nigel joined the, uh, these guys' bands. And I think they were struggling a bit to get a singer. And at mm-hmm. that time, the band that I was in was just kind of breaking up. So. Yeah. yeah, we just we I they asked for me they asked for me and I wanted to do it so yeah, and we've been doing it since what 2013 all of us yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah we got uh, Will as well who's not here today our drummer <laughs> basically we went to college had a band together Jamie went to another band the drummer we had introduced to the guitarist now and we got rid Which of that drummer Nigel. eventually because yeah. stuff hit the van. And then the original drummer came back. Every person I've interviewed so far, they've always had problems with drummers. It's, <laughs> it's a drummer thing. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're just really I mean, rare to find a good drummer. I <laughs> that's. I was a drummer in the first band we yeah. were in together, mm. and we had too many drummers at college, <laughs> and so I wow. ended up picking up a bass and playing bass. Yeah, because I was going to ask actually, because Nigel, since I knew him, he always played bass. He played yeah. bass, yeah. yeah. So. That was yeah, quite a surprise. You wanted to play guitar, didn't you? Yeah, I used to play guitar. Got to college um, after my first year. I went on to my second quarter, um, second year, and everyone was a guitarist, and there was yeah. like, no bass players. And I wanted to get into a band because I was desperate. So I was just started <laughs> playing bass. Like like <laughs> want me? Want me? <laughs> and, um, and a fun fact, because every everyone kind of knows everyone around here, uh, Nigel used to be in a band with Grant, the lead singer of Seasons. Yeah. A very long time ago, in an old college band. He was yeah. probably the talent in that band. Yeah, he was. yeah, he was. He was an <laughs> awesome drummer in that band. But yeah, that's that's before he stepped up to be a front man. And I'm pretty impressed by uh, seasons so far. They seem to just you know pop out of nowhere. Yeah, they quite they did. They, yeah, and they really well. They look really good. I, yeah, I saw them two Saturdays ago now, and uh, they were playing a, an outside festival thing, and yeah, absolutely smashed it. Kept everyone's attention as well because it wasn't mm. really there crowd you know they had a couple of you know their little fan club at the front which you know every band has yeah. but it was a big big crowd and they were all paying attention to them and yeah they 
everyone loved it and they sounded great and yeah they have just sort of come out of nowhere like mm. you said that's a lot of the reason why I wanted them to sort of launch this podcast as well because I'm, I'm obviously new to this whole thing and mm. I'm just trying to reconnect with everyone who I used to know and who's involved with music and stuff and they were just sort of on the cusp of releasing their first EP I think they they just released it a month before and I sort of just got in there before they got management so that I was talking to him directly luckily and uh, I was like will you you know come on launch this podcast with me he's like yes yeah, brilliant idea you know really up for it and oh, he was just like you're so lucky though because otherwise you would have been talking to management and they probably wouldn't have been up for that because usually they're like yeah. oh we want established yeah. people to come and interview you and you know we'd rather you focus on that but I think how it should work is everyone helps out each other really and this is this is what this podcast is all about it's giving unsigned bands a voice because otherwise there's such a, a long period of just you know people not getting interviews and not getting the recognition they deserve really I think that's what's so good about uh, our, our kind of scene and stuff. Like everyone we play with, that we just everyone's just so supportive of each other and everything. You know, we played a really awesome show the other night. Um, just it was only like a local show at the corner house. We were just uh, supporting some friends in uh, Evergreen and yeah, yeah. Uh, the young and young and running. Yeah, and um, like it was just such a great night. Like everyone was up enjoying everyone else's mm. bands. You know, and there was other people there. Everyone's friends. You know, they didn't go outside. Uh, yeah. like smoking and stuff they're all in, in there everyone's just enjoying the music and it was it was a really great really great night actually. it was it was a really good atmosphere wasn't it and yeah like everyone's just so uh, great with each other like all these bands like we've, we've made so many like good friends like along the, along the road like we've been on a couple of tours now and every time we've just picked up like we've picked up friends from across like uh sweden like uh yeah we talked with swedish bands um and I, i'd say that we made some really good friends there and you just get to meet like a real different mix of people as well, don't you? Yeah. Like different musicians, <clears throat> different talents, things you learn along the way. Yeah, everyone's there for each other. Yeah, I it's think just that's a what's so great. Network, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't happen in in like every kind of um, genre of music. Mm -mm. There's a lot of uh, bitchiness and things like that, which mm. it, it's horrible, you know. Yeah. Where everyone's in the same boat at the end of the day. You released your first EP, Makeup and Mind Games, in July last year. Yeah. yeah. And you've also made videos for those songs as well. Tell us about the themes of those videos, because they're both quite different. Okay, so I think for the, the first one we released was We Don't Hate, the same mm -hmm. people they do, if I'm doing the full title. Yeah. And I think we did that on a very low budget, didn't yeah. we? It's like minimum, yeah. Um, how much How much budget are we like, talking? Uh, because not many under people... 50 under 50 pounds, yeah. yeah. Under 50 quid? <laughs> yeah, we managed wow, to under 50 pounds. that's amazing. Just, uh, yeah, got, got some things from like charity shops and stuff. Yeah. And, and this like, is this is the tea set one, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and most of that came from either we borrowed from friends or we got at charity shops and stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, that's cool. So it wasn't like your mum's china or anything? <laughs> <laughs> no, certainly not. not I think, I think my girlfriend stole stuff. some stuff from her work. <laughs> <laughs> Because there were like maggots and things in in, yeah. in the cups, yeah. so yeah. you probably couldn't return those. No, we no. set them free. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> Back to their home uh, food. So that was obviously the props in there. What yeah. was the kind of idea for that? Where I did that come from? I think from? the idea came from the person that we were shooting with. Mm -hmm. And you can say it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's my ass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you don't. You don't have to go into all that. Just, just no. say, just say like how yeah, was, who like yeah, it was, it was the her, thing. My ex-girlfriend who filmed it for us. Okay. Yeah, and she's actually um, she's really talented. Yeah, it was good. I mean, all, all, all she had was just what uh, yeah, so DSLR, like, one yeah. one camera, like barely any equipment. Yeah. Mm. And we we shot that one literally like yeah. uh, was it half a day a day. Yeah. Yeah. And it was good and like yeah, it was great like. I mean, not the easiest people to work with. But, <laughs> no, no it, was, it was a, well, I suppose, learning curve on both sides. It was, yeah. it was a nightmare. I mean, we, had, we were <laughs> obviously in the middle of a forest, yeah. so we had to park on the side of like a road and it's a long just way to push it out. Carry all of our yeah. amps into the forest, and oh, it's, it was a nightmare. Yeah. But, but yeah, exactly. We, we do it all by ourselves. Kind of everything we do, we we do by ourselves. Now yeah. you've said that as well, though. That's an important thing to mention. Is that like in the video, it's Cambridgeshire. Mm -hmm. Like the forest is local. Yeah. The other thing is fairly local. Yeah. 
and moving to the honestly video yeah. that we rented the leper chapel in cambridge so we try and use like cambridge places keep it kind of like location based around yeah. us and it also gives back to a place that we live in so like we paid to hire the leper chapel that goes to the fund that looks after the building and stuff like that so yeah that's great that's, that's a really good nice. idea yeah yeah i like that um, but yeah, that's where that one was filmed. And again, concept. Yeah, the concept for that. Was that, that? Guys? Yeah, what well, um, was, was, was the story? The, to me, it, like, oh, I don't know, it was kind of just <laughs> improvised, wasn't it? None of us really knew what we were doing. We just brought a uniform. <laughs> the, the vague thing was kind of like a gothic -y feel based on the building. Yeah. So the yeah. building, I guess, defined how the theme felt anyway, so but we might as well embrace it. The thing, the thing, the thing we thought about afterwards is, so we re released the track, released the video, and then, like, to me, I know it's just like, I just looked at it and I was like, oh, okay, we look like a goth band. Yeah. <laughs> it reminded me of, like, the early 30 Seconds to Mars videos or Panic yeah. at the Disco videos yeah. when they were just I caped Aiden in makeup. And that yeah, like a Aiden as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the, those are sort of early bands. Yeah, they're, they're early stuff, definitely. That one was a slightly larger budget. I think we spent about 800 quid. Wow. Doing that video. That was a good experience, I think. Mm. Yeah, it was good, yeah. And we're actually planning our next one. Yeah. So, yeah, it's all so. fun. What I liked about the second video, we didn't get stopped by police at the end of it as well. <laughs> no, that, was, that was fun. Yeah. In the first video, we were reported, apparently, because we were having an illegal rave. The police turned <laughs> oh, up. We were sitting on the side of the road. And at 5pm on a Sunday, we were sat on the side of the road, looking a bit miserable, a bit muddy, yeah. a bit sorry for ourselves, quietly packing stuff away. And they turned up and went, is there an illegal rave? And we looked at them and they said, there's not, is there? I, <laughs> no, it was both, both locations for that it video so shoot. Bad. We got the, the police got involved. Oh, yeah. really? But yeah. I mean, it wasn't such a, we, we didn't do anything no, bad. No, there was no, no malice just, in our actions. Yeah. At all, yeah. I mean, we, we were very, obviously very respectful of like, everywhere we went. And then I just get a phone call from the police. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah, we've been going through uh, your Facebook and that. And we can see that you've been to this place and doing this thing with your band, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I was just like, God, what? They've got <laughs> nothing better to do. I know. And all oh. we're doing is trying to, you know, trying to do what we love. Yeah. We'll oh, show off a bit of the pretty things around as well. Do yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? We're not oh, messy. God. We tidy up after ourselves. Yeah, we're not animals. Like, yeah, don't leave any cake. So I think <laughs> they did. Uh, once, once we explained it, I mean, they were really like they understood in that. Yeah, it's it's just people that are around. Maybe I think like just don't understand what. No, we're doing. they don't. Do they? They and it's. It's probably old people like, oh, yeah, oh, exactly. what are these young'uns doing? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> You've recently been back in the studio recording a new song called Daytime TV. Yeah. Let's talk that, about it. That, that, that was a great experience to us because the guy uh, we recorded with, uh, Matty Moon, he's like an amazing producer, you know. He does he does some really great stuff for some really great, and like works with really great bands. I, I Personally, I'm like, amazed by the, the things he creates. And yeah, I think we're really, really happy with the track mm. we've got back, and we're like, we want to work with him again already, get some more stuff laid yeah, out. Yeah, that was over in Milton, wasn't it? A half ton. Yeah, yeah. It's no, it's a great little space they've done. From the outside, you never guess what's inside half ton. <laughs> yeah. And they know what they're doing as well. They do. I mean, it's just professionalism. Yeah. No, the both of them as well. Was Matt Moon previously at CRC? Yeah, yeah, he was. yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah tech. I, I did recognise the name. Yeah. Yeah. Then he went for ARU for a bit, and then mm. now does that. Awesome. So did you just go in and record that track or have you recorded a few others or was it just that specific one? Or is that a spoiler? No, are you not allowed it's, not to say? A, it's not a spoiler as such. Do we, we are do... currently recording new material. Oh, okay, so is that an exclusive we have? Yes. Awesome. <laughs> I was hoping for an exclusive. <laughs> so there you go. We, no, we are currently, it's not just going to be the one song, there will be others. Okay. So, new EP. What can we expect from it? It's anthemic. It's so much different to what we've previously done. I think our idea with the new stuff coming out is that it's rebranding ourselves, mm -hmm. what we have to offer and what we want to achieve. Yeah. It's taken, I think we've taken like a next level up with developing our sound, with our equipment, with the way we're getting it produced. Um, yeah, it's 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 been really enjoyable, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, no, normally we're always out there playing gigs here, there, and everywhere. But I think the past few months and the next few months looking forward, we're uh, really really working on behind the scenes. You know, we've got a few gigs planned, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. I think we're just really working hard behind the scenes mm -hmm. and trying to 
um, bring out something that we hope people will really love and really Just enjoy. Just something a bit different. Yeah. yeah. Than what people are, are used to. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah we've heard some really uh, like nice feedback and stuff so far about the uh, the single we've recorded. Yeah, no, we have. We've had some lovely feedback from some lovely people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, we're really really excited for, uh, to see what what comes with this EP. Will you be doing another video for daytime TV? Yes. <laughs> there you go. Yes, that is the video we are planning to shoot for awesome. like September time. Oh, okay. And if you want to find out about when it's going to be released, you have to check Facebook or our website or similar yeah. things. Okay, awesome. Two exclusives. That's, yeah, that's brilliant. Mate. You're good at this. I am. I'm good at <laughs> I'm good at getting people talking. So there will be a video for daytime TV. And you've very, very kindly said I can play a snippet of the new song on this podcast. Yes. Then that'd be awesome. It'd be nice to let people hear a little bit of what's to come. We're really, really excited about it and we wish we could share more. Like, yeah. But it's nice to be able to give people a flavour. Yes, a little teaser. Yeah. So we're going to play a very short clip now of the new song, Daytime TV. Just give me another moment I'll swear to you you're not risen Right, so that was an exclusive snippet of daytime TV. I obviously haven't listened. I'm going to obviously listen at the end when I edit this, which is so annoying. But I'm going to I'm going to say it's amazing, and I can't wait to hear the rest of the song. You guys have been. <laughs> The joys of pre-production. It's fabulous. <laughs> you guys have been very busy playing a lot of shows this year so far. And we're only halfway through the year. So you've probably got more to come. We'll talk about those in a sec. I just wanted to know some of your personal highlights or favourite shows you've played so far this year. Just maybe like one or two each, because I'm sure there's lots. It's, it's got to be uh, Fort Hope for, for me. Um, that, was, that was such a special one for me. I mean, as soon as the, like I heard their name... Like a few months back, a year back, or whatever. Like I've been such a big fan, and just uh, uh, we found out they're coming to Cambridge, so we tried really hard to uh, get support, and yeah, it happened. So it was yeah, great. No, like that was a fantastic it's show. Wasn't so it? awesome to play with a band that you genuinely love. Like mm. they yeah. were really, really genuine people as well. Yeah, they were oh, really good cool people. Yeah. yeah. So was that the the Portland? Where yeah, was that? Was yeah. it the Portland Arms? Yeah. But overwhelming, like first of all, getting on, like we we were opening, uh, mm. getting on stage, and you see everyone there, and you're like. <laughs> it's kind of intimidating, yeah, yeah. even though it is sort of a homish, yeah, yeah, uh, crowd. Yeah, and we still had our our, our normal crowd down there. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, local support for you. Yeah, well, which the crowds actually give us a shout out as well. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's always good. We did play quite a fun acoustic show the other day as well. Yeah, I say awesome. like like we have played a lot of these big shows like with Fort Hope, which for us at the moment is a really big show, and we're mm. really appreciative when any promoter puts us on a show like that. But little shows as well like the other night we played this little acoustic show supporting our friends who were on tour we couldn't do it as full band but really wanted to help them out with having another act there so we um <laughs> did this acoustic show and i think you don't like playing acoustic do you jamie i really really don't enjoy it i mean it's just like having the the power of a full band behind you you're yeah, really energetic yeah. front man yeah I exactly I don't, I don't i can't stand still mm. um mm. and if i do i just look awkward you know like and, you know, yeah, I really, just really enjoy just giving it my own, just getting all my anger out and just really going for it when I play. Um, but then nights like the other night when, like, the whole crowd, we did a few covers, got everyone in a pretty good mood, ready for a night of pop punk behind us. And everyone was singing and it was just a really nice atmosphere. Like, yeah, that's good. And, yeah, that was probably a highlight for me just because everyone was so into it. For me, um, when we supported uh, We Are The Ocean... Uh, it was a bit a bit sweet because it was an amazing opportunity to support We Are The Ocean but sadly uh, Jamie wasn't with us he was off uh, so he obviously he couldn't make it but so we knuckled down as a, a four piece too busy uh, enjoying the sun in Florida <laughs> no, it was unfortunately it was just, it was <laughs> an opportunity that guided. arrived yeah. and well I, to I took up lead vocals for it because we didn't want to not do the opportunity and not 
network and meet these people and play with these people. We never, mm. we never want to let people down. We're, no. we're, we're yeah, like right now, like the situation, the like we, yeah, like the other night where we're playing acoustic shows. It's just because we, yeah, we don't want to let the people down. And, you know, we, we still, we just make it work. Yeah. Just, yeah. yeah. And I think the other one was when a highlight for me was when we got to. Uh, Almost like headline at Junction that time, oh, yeah. the strawberry uh, fair sort of. Uh, yeah, finalist. the band competition. That was a, that was, I love that. Those are bittersweet yeah, yeah. feelings because <laughs> mm. we've we've entered that, and gotten to, into the final, and come kind of second yeah. two consecutive years. Well, but, see that kind, raised... that kind of surprises me because there's a lot of shit played at the strawberry fair. Yes. Like yeah. Yeah. I know it's all oh, yeah. I know it's all well and yeah. good for like local bands, blah blah yeah. blah. But some of the shit you get on that stage, oh, yeah. it's like how how are these people playing yeah. like to this crowd of people, and like no one's there to watch them, on, you know. And it's just like how did how did they get picked, you know, when some other bands have got a huge following, and you know, I think I think kind of I think it's a bit corporate sometimes, even though it's yeah. Strawberry Fair and Do you know, you know really all that. Interesting, you say that. I think you're right, and that is the feel they try and pump into the fair, which is that. Everyone has a choice, and it's free, like a yeah. free festival to just enjoy. But for rest. me, I'm not saying I know anything, but no, for on. me, as a, you know, just yeah. viewing everything there and sort of knowing what people are into and bands that aren't getting on, when I, when I see bands that are on there and they're drawing zero people and zero interest, I'm thinking, who's running this show? Well, exactly. And, and that's, who that's who what, are they running it for? That's it's, what it's, we thought this year, and we didn't enter, did we? No, we, we didn't. didn't it, it's not. It's it. not. It's not necessarily our type of music, uh, like the scene around. No, it isn't. But I think what what what's important for us is we've been going there since we were young. You know, yeah. there's all sorts of music there. Yeah, I I did <laughs> I did I did. Like, I'm going to admit, I did briefly go there for an hour or two, walked around, and I left. Yeah. I thought yeah, so I thought right. it was so boring. It Missing doesn't, what it had. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's just because I'm older or what, or I, I wasn't, think, or I wasn't wasted. But they put so many new rules and brought like five times as many police. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not even bothered about that. It's just there's no atmosphere, no, the atmosphere. No. and the bands, the bands, the bands and the bands this year were so dull. The ones I did see, yeah, fair enough. I went quite early in the day. I probably didn't see the decent bands that were playing in yeah. the evening. But I just think, you know, give some local yeah. bands a chance. Put yeah. them on early, because they will draw a crowd. You know, yeah, it doesn't have true. to be that. Oh, we only want crowds at night. Mm. You know, it should be an all-day thing. I think you find as well that the same acts are repeated. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I've I've, I've always you know, noticed like, that. I've yeah. seen bands on the scene now for the past few years that play it every it's year a guaranteed... on the same stage <clears throat> around the same time. Yeah, I think it's, it's, a, kind of, it's a kind of matey thing, isn't it? If it you is definitely. Do you know which, what, is, we, which is we, more and more challenging in such a saturated industry. Do you know what we should do? We should start our own festival. <laughs> Have it in this back garden. <laughs> Let's do it. It's quite a big garden. Yeah. Set up a little we stage. Got, we just got a thumbs up here from the desk. So yeah, we, yeah, we are. We've we've kind of <laughs> we've kind of done it before. Really? We've had you know we've had tents. We've had well, you saw that giant speaker out there. There's mm. there's a couple of those lying about. And yeah, it's it's no, nothing beats up. Apparently, it's a, yeah, yeah, it's a huge thing in America. Actually, bands just get together and they just say, "We all want to play in this garden." Tell people to turn up. You know, stand by the gate. People pay, come in. Just listen to the music, and yeah, have a good time. They haven't got to worry about mm, booking venues. Blah, blah, yeah. blah. They just do house shows, That's but obviously cool. outside. And it's a huge thing over in America because so many venues mess them around yeah. or just won't give them a chance mm. but they just think oh we'll just do house shows then and they get bands together and try and be you know sort of central and local to people so they can get there yeah and that's what they do yeah see i think that's a great idea cool. especially this really? time of year yeah. especially this time of year just do it no we're booked you just yeah, don't swear they, yeah 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 we'll, we are there we'll start it the local distortion festival we'll bring the bill <laughs> <laughs> and invoice the rider <laughs> yeah. and I'll, I'll stream it on my YouTube channel. Exactly. I, I'm going to do this now. <laughs> That'll be amazing. Well, you've got four stewards at least. But yeah, I, you know, I'll just, I'll just word it in a way, or just be like, you know, I'm just having a house party to, you know, to the local police. Yeah. I won't tell them how many people are in the back garden. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> They'll send the police so helicopter over. That is courtesy. Yeah. 
Right, I'll be like, oh, can I can I borrow the footage from your from your police <laughs> helicopter? <laughs> <laughs> You got, a, uh, you got a great shot up there. Stick a egg, egg boxes to your fences, you'll be all right. Yeah, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously you've toured a lot this year so far. Have you got any tour dates left? We won't head out on another tour in 2016. Will you just play shows here and there? Or? We have a handful of shows. Yeah. Um, autumn going into winter. We just need to quit work and just go on tour for the rest of our lives. So if anyone listening wants to fund yeah. any pipe dreams... We'll, we'll eat like 30p noodles a day. You know. I'll lick the sweat from our hair. I'll do your washing. <laughs> You'll do a lot more than that from. Oh, this yeah. is so house trained. We're like the most polite band. Can't we just be raucous? Oh, you're making food. Just have a burger van slash tour van. Oh, yes. So really, everywhere you go, you just cook up some food, mm. play some shows, move on. Do you reckon steak it on or like a Indoor salad? <laughs> <laughs> that was, that was steak and honour. Drag us along on like a back bring of the it, kind bring of it to <laughs> Bring it to my festival, yeah, just park up. <laughs> Entertainment and burgers. <laughs> yeah. Good burgers. So that's, that's sort of leading on to my next question. How do you juggle home life with playing gigs and incredible circus skills and band practice yeah. how do you fit all that in what's your week schedule like Go on, well, how, how, yeah, tell how do us you... why you're getting wrinkles now man and like grey hairs <laughs> and white white hair it's you know, no pigmentation no it's white I do apologise you're working too hard um, yeah I'm hardly working <laughs> <laughs> no, I... it can be stressful sometimes like um... do you practice once a week or yeah, how regularly yeah. do you practice? We, we practice. Um, yeah, we try to keep it once a week. Yeah. Once mm-hmm. a week, occasionally we'll yeah. do stuff in the week if we're recording or demoing. Yeah. I think as as much as we would love to do it, like uh, practice more, it's you know the only way to be able to do what we're doing and afford the equipment um, and you know the petrol and everything like that, getting to shows and stuff. The only way we can do it is all by working, really. Yeah. Um, to yeah to fund what we love. Hopefully one day it will come back to us and. Uh, <laughs> It'll be, it'll be worth it. I mean, it's not, it's not about that. It's about just, it's, we just really enjoy it, you know. We're like, we're like five really be- like best mates. We just have a laugh, have a great time. Yeah, and I think, I think that's the key to it. I think as soon as you start not having fun and it becomes yeah. a chore, that's yeah. when you realise you probably shouldn't be doing this. Yeah, if it's not fun, it's not right. Yeah. That, that, happens um, to, that happens to a lot of bands. Like, like we've, we've been in that position many a times. Oh, you we know. get stressed. Like we, get, we get really stressed. And, you know, like loads of us have said before, oh, that's it, we're giving up, I'm giving up. You know, we've all said it at uh, certain points, but at the end of the day, if you stick through it, you know, mm-hmm. the, and then you play the, just this one show, like, it doesn't matter how many people's there, yeah. like, you know. This one show, just get the buzz uh, again. That's it, exactly. Yeah. Straight out there. Yeah. yeah. I think being in a band is actually almost harder than some would say a marriage can be, because <laughs> you're not managing yeah, one ways, yeah. relationship. Mm. You're splitting it with however many members. Yeah. Are there, and it's important to get along. You you can't oh, yeah, fight definitely. your way to success. Do you know what I mean? You no. have to. Work Even though some some bands have strangely done that though, they've all yeah. hated each yeah. other and not spoke to each mm. other. But then made amazing music. I don't. Yeah. I don't get that, but it happens, mm. doesn't it? Nice. But I think. I, th- I think it's harder that way. I think the su- su- the uh, success obviously comes first, and then they fall out, yeah. and then they have to stay yeah. together. Well, exactly. Mm. Because, because of that. Pressure, yeah. Because yeah, of the pressure too. and the income. Mm. But yeah, it's but no. it's it's so weird how people can do that. But no, we fight, we fall out, we make up, yeah. we make music. Yeah. Yeah, that's all that matters. As long as yeah, we carry on. I mean, stick as, with long, it. as long as we're all still good mates at the end of the day, you know, that's it. This is like the best song I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I am expecting a cold shower afterwards. Yeah, yeah, it's called a hose pipe. Yeah, yeah, the ice right. bucket challenge. We'll start that up again. <laughs> so a lot of big bands recently who who started off about 10, 15 years ago, the Used, In Me, Funeral for a Friend, R.I.P. They all started towards the end or recently playing gigs where they just play their first or second album in its entirety from start to finish obviously do you think this trend is a good thing because obviously fans get a guarantee of the nostalgia and getting a song played that they want to hear do you think it's a bad thing that bands are doing this it kind of makes you predictable yeah definitely 
I think it's like watching a movie though. If you want to watch a movie, that's the movie you want to watch. You don't want to watch the sequel. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to watch that film. And I see that a bit like following a band or an artist, you know. Unfortunately for some bands, and fortunately for others, because it works both ways, some acts get caught in an era of mm -hmm. music. Yeah. I think I think you gotta have a fine balance. Like, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Like, when I go see a gig, I I want to hear those old songs, those like those songs that I heard when I was growing up. You know what I mean? You also want to get a surprise, as like Matt says. Like you want you want to see they're still they've still got it. They're still special. and They can still wow you. Yeah, and I think, you know, I've I've been to a few of those gigs where they play the whole album all the way through. And the thing is, I'd seen those bands four or five times before when they had just done different sets every time and enjoyed every single one that was great and obviously when they started doing the whole oh we'll just play the first album or the second album I thought oh wow this is a great idea but then bands seem to just do it all the time and that's the only gigs they're playing and they're sort of not really progressing and sort of just sticking with their old stuff because they know it will... That's the stuff that's made their money you know well, yeah, and we've got them where they are and they know it will draw people back in because they know it's pretty much a guaranteed sellout gig as well do I you think that's do you think that's right or do you think that's a bit, a bit of a cop out i think it totally depends band to band mm. different bands have different followings they have a different type of friend fan base yeah and i think like i don't know you look at certain bands who have like a real cult following and they'll love them no matter what they do mm. you know even if they change their genre dramatically like they will still love them yeah. So I think it depends. It must get it must get pretty boring for like big bands to just keep exactly. playing those songs it's like over like you know 10 20 30 years. Yeah. And they've got you know yeah it's just like But as a as a fan mm. you go to these gigs not the not the obviously album ones just a normal gig and you go you expect to hear a song because you do you have your yeah. favorites you yeah. want to hear them. And if a band doesn't play it you're going to feel ripped off you're going to feel disappointed. Yeah. yeah. I know you can't please everyone. You know bands that don't want to play certain singles even though they release them as singles so they want it out there they want that to be their vocal point what if bands turn against that song and they don't want to play it do you think that's right even though they have a big fan base who will want to hear that song live i think they would have to play it yeah just yeah because exactly. they're there to please fans because it's respected isn't it what, famous famously nirvana hated playing Smells Like Teen yeah. Spirit. Yeah. Same with Guns N' Roses and Sweet Child. Yeah, they, you know, all bands have that song where they're just like, yeah. not this again. But that's the song that yeah. people yeah. love and enjoy, so just play it for them, yeah. do you know what I mean? I think if you hate it that much, yeah. just play it first, get out of the way. Yeah, That's what <laughs> bands have started doing, actually. I, I did notice that with Foo Fighters, to be honest. They played, they played Everlong first, yeah. and I was like, oh, okay, they're obviously a bit, a bit bored of that. Yeah, but just play it first, get it out of the way. People have heard it. You can just push on with new stuff then, or whatever you want to play. But I think, like you said, it's it's different to every band. Some some fans are more accepting, yeah. and some fans are more hostile, and they're just like, just play this, just play that. We won't accept new stuff, or unless it sounds like your old stuff. Oh, it still doesn't sound like your old stuff. We don't like it. <laughs> I think, yeah, you just you just can't please anyone, can you? So, you have a crowd vote. Yeah. Just mm. gotta stay true to yourself and just do music that you as a band enjoy mm. doing. Because if you mm. start trying to please people, it's yeah. Um, I have seen doing it. yeah, I have seen some bands who get very involved with their fans on social media and say, "Tell us what songs you want to hear," and the ones with the most votes get played. Yeah. So I think I think that's kind of nice because you're giving giving people that option and they feel involved. Then even maybe if their certain songs don't get played. Maybe another one that they've suggested will. So I think I think that's a good thing. But then Something probably we do. people have a pretty good good idea what's going to be played. Yeah, I mean you want to you want to throw a curveball in there sometimes. Maybe do a random cover out of nowhere. I think you've done recently with a Papa Roach song. We we just like to whip it out when when the party is raving, <laughs> <laughs> when when everyone's dancing. Everyone we just whip it out. We'll Everyone along loves and have it. Have a good time, won't they? Yeah, and we love it. It's just so much fun. Yeah. Like the atmosphere so. in the room is wicked. People didn't know we were talking about a song. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to whip it out. So much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I have kind of a nice story to sort of wind down the show with. We've got like two more questions after this. But we've just got a nice story I'd like to share. Obviously, I know Nigel 
from back in the day, back in college. And I think back in 2009 now, I went to see Bring Me The Horizon in Norwich and bumped into Nigel at the gig. <laughs> and he's obviously with a group of guys and girls and uh, didn't really know the people he was with that well, sort of seen him around. And ironically, one of the girls he was with turns out to be my future wife, who I'm with, who I'm with today. The small Crazy. world, isn't it? Yeah. The small world. Very small world. But yeah, so I kind of, I kind of owe everything to Nigel, really, for introducing me and... There you go, Nigel. Go, yeah. Nigel. <laughs> this. So the moral of this story is, go to gigs, support bands, because you never know who you're going to meet. Exactly. Well. Yeah. 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 I, I met my girlfriend like what six, seven, six. Oh shit. Six years ago. <laughs> seven years. Oh god. Definitely cut that. Definitely cut that. <laughs> <laughs> I met my girlfriend at the show. Years ago. It was yeah. like, yeah. many it was years ago. Birthday. My birthday party. Yeah. You met your girlfriend. Yeah. I remember I actually introduced you to. That was ages ago. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, just everyone, just get out there, go see bands. Don't get arsy if they don't play your song that you want to hear no. because it's, it's who you meet, it's the fun times you have. and yeah, Go you know. out, have fun, exactly. see new bands. Yeah, because you're going to have no fun sitting at home on your own. No. no. You just gonna, can't. Unless you're playing Pokemon. And, well, <laughs> I was going to talk about that. Well, if you're playing Pokemon, you're not going to be sitting at home, are you? <laughs> yeah. That's very true, mate. Yeah, exactly. The, the Come to our gigs, play time. Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're just telling them like there's a rare Pokemon like at the, at the that's what that's what some restaurants have been movie. doing. They're like, oh, a rare Pokemon spot. Yeah, it comes out after eleven. Come so down to say, come down to come down to Subway. So now we're going to talk about your guilty pleasures, songs or artists that you know, you're quite embarrassed that you listen to and you might not want to admit to people, but unfortunately you're going <laughs> to. You know, pure Gosh, cheese. This is such good fun. P- pure cheese that you just love to put on and yeah. Craig David. Craig David. Well, I'll, I'll say that. Pre Craig David's, what's his comeback? His what comeback. Uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> his old stuff when he was. When, it, when nobody loved him again, like before, say, six, before six Kez, months, 12 months ago. Yeah. Before Kez showed up. I'm not even, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I've always loved him. I've always felt really sorry for him. Yeah, it, was, of that. it was a bit hard. But now, stuff. after his comeback, his songs are just, you know, he's just repeating himself, repeating all the songs that he's used to sing, like all the same lyrics and everything. It's just, now I'm bored of him. So, a bit of Craig. A bit of Craig. <laughs> yeah. Craig. <laughs> if I was you, man, I wouldn't even feel guilty about that. I'm, I'm not guilty about it. Every, I like, I, everyone quality. knew how much I loved him, yeah. He was quality. Quality. I do like Bruno Mars. Mm. I think he writes some really good good tunes, but some of them are really bad. Some of them are like, what are we, You're what such are you a doing? cheese ball. What do you like? I, I like he's, he does write good songs. What's your favourite Bruno Mars song? My favourite one. Sing it. Get out of heaven. That one? Yeah. So I'm not that much of a big fan. I can't remember the name of it. So I, I, I'm just, it's like, called Locked Out of Heaven. Yeah. Yeah. I put it on just for even the, I know the, that the high. I'm like, yeah. I think, I think you've got some competition with the, the Bruno Mars fan yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know the songs by name. The fandom. Oh, really, <laughs> that, that other song I kept playing over and over again, mainly to just like wind up my other half. But um, <laughs> Lunch Money Lewis. I got bills. Oh no. <laughs> <I have> to, <laughs> <play>. <laughs> to keep playing it over and over again, and I kind of really like it now. And it's yeah. That is a guilty pleasure. Yeah, no, yeah, if I'm anyone's listening, down, we are just looking for a new guitarist. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. Brutal. <laughs> Do you know, I'm not guilty Be honest. about it. Be honest. But I probably wouldn't rock up to every venue we play <laughs> with ABBA playing, who I really Ooh. like. Mm. ABBA are fantastic songwriters. Mm. It's purely from a songwriting point of view. So, yeah. 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 ABBA, and I'm a bit partial to the likes of like... I like old music, so like Melanie Safka and 60s, 70s, Ooh, 80s. Oh, that, that old. Climbing into the 80s, but yeah, there's a oh, few of cool. mine. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably busted. I'm not that embarrassed. I'm going to go see them on Friday. Oh, is yeah. it McFly? <laughs> One of the two. Or is it McFly? He hates you whoever's, even more now. Whoever's playing in the market. Yeah, I love both of them. And Son of Dork. Son of Dork are wicked. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because when I had uh, Depravity in here, they're obviously hardcore death metal bands. I asked them the same question. The guitarist is like, partial to a bit of Busted. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yes. I think, I think everyone secretly loves a bit of Busted, don't they? 
I I don't. Nah, no, but good. I'm a huge Charlie Simpson fan. I and love fight star? I love Fight Star yeah. and I even loved his acoustic stuff. I yeah, thought he, he is brilliant. He, he can do no that. wrong. He can do no wrong. And he went back to busted. It's so. just so <laughs> so cheesy and so good. It takes you right back to your childhood. Cheesy it's quality. Right it's quality. It's good good stuff to put on a party, isn't it? Exactly. Because it gets, yeah. gets everyone in the mood. Exactly. Everyone's singing along. So now we've come to the end of the show. Where can everyone find you on social media? Uh, so if, yeah, firstly, you can come to our website, which is www.standinglikestatues.com. Or you can find us on Facebook. We're Standing Like Statues UK. Find us on YouTube. Uh, Standing Like Statues UK again. And Mater, who we've all just looked at, is looking back at us blankly, not I don't know what else we're on. Well, you're on it. You're on everything. So I yeah, think. basically, you'll find us on, on all the normal channels. Your Twitter bird thing. It's, it's lost touch with Twitter. Like, you're on Instagram yeah. as well. We're on Instagram. Yeah, actually, we we are fond users of Instagram. We do tend to share what we're doing on Instagram. Like statues UK. You can find us. Yeah, and we hashtag that little um, cross thing. Yeah. Statues army. Our little. Oh, is that your group of friends that like our music? Oh, that's cool. What did, what did they used to call it? Street team. Yeah. They used to call they used to call yeah. things like that, didn't they? From the bands. But then we grew but they up still do it was that. Appropriate to hang on the street. So yeah. To... Do bands still do street teams? Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. They do. Mm. Still a very free stickers. Successful... Yeah. So if there's anyone out there who wants to uh, <laughs> do some free flyering, yeah, at like Statues UK. <laughs> do you have stickers? We can. Yeah. We, if anyone's we have... up for it, we can definitely get, some, get some stickers, and I will tag the place up. Stickers. <laughs> we've got flyers. We have badges, wristbands, t-shirts. And a CD, and you can find. Yeah, those. where can you buy your CD? You can buy basically any of our merchandise over on Big Cartel or Bandcamp. The best way to get there is through our website because we have links for everything. Okay. Which again is standinglikestatues.com. And your EP is everywhere, isn't it? It's on iTunes, Spotify. Absolutely everywhere. Yeah. Do you know what they're Amazon, I think, yeah. as well. Yeah. HMV. Oh. Xbox Music, all of that. Xbox Music. It's on everything. Wow. Wow. Everything you can think of. But yeah. HMV um, still going? HMV Digital. HMV Digital. Oh, wow. But no, um, if anyone that is listening to this wants to buy a physical copy, we'd really appreciate it because it's the physical copies of things that we sell that help us afford to go on tour and to do stuff like that. To record everything We like promise that. a good product. We never skimp on buying stuff. We won't just scribble on a CD for you. It is printed. It is finished. And yeah, every mm. person that buys one of those will throw in some free stuff and we appreciate every penny spent. Yeah, come to a show and we'll, we'll definitely put on a show as well. Like, yeah. You won't you won't be disappointed. I really like your um, EP cover as well. It's really nice artwork. Yeah, well. that's just, that's drawn and designed by Nigel Ferguson here. Yeah, you did that. He did. Uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I, I really love that design. I've seen I've seen like similar styles to that as well. With obviously the map used yeah, in. Yeah, like, I, I try to keep. it If you look at the map, you'll see everywhere we'll. We come from all of our villages. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Really that's that's, that's awesome. So it's just, exactly no, no, it's, it's not a random. No, no. It's not just a random map. Not many people know that either. So there you go. You've oh, got another exclusive. Three. All I've those been... subtle little things. Well, I've been spoiled, and everyone listening has been spoiled. Yeah, we're, we're very, very <laughs> active on social media <laughs> and everything like that. So yeah, definitely come find us. Come have a chat. Yeah, no. Message we're, us. We're frankly, so, you know, yeah. we're not scary. We do like talking to people, getting their opinions on shows, knowing what they're listening to. You know. Because that's so important when we're making music is, what do you want to hear, guys? Mm. And if, if you want to come see us at any shows, uh, we've got a few lined up this year. Uh, I think the first, the first one we've got coming up is the 30th of July, which is uh, in Haverhill at the Bull Pub. And that's, it's, it's, I think it's a charity thing as well called uh, Pim Jam. And it's, it's for a really good cause. Uh, so yeah, like get down. And I'm pretty sure it's free entry as well. Loads and loads of great bands playing. Um, that, should, that should be a wicked one. Um, we've got a few more coming up after yeah. that. September, off the top of my head, I think it's the 23rd, but check our Facebook and confirm that closer to the time. <laughs> we'll be playing quite a big show at the Portland Arms. We are then playing a secret show in October, which we're looking forward to announcing. Um, that's going to be in Cambridge, that's all we can really tell you at the moment, um, with a great collab of companies, you know, it's wicked. Awesome. Uh, we've then got a headline slot at the Junction. We'll be playing the Fiverr on the 18th of November, which we are really, really excited about and wow. want to get as many people down to that because we're on a great lineup of acts who are local and who are working really hard. I'll have like to come us. down to that one then. Well, I'll, I'll try and make it to any of your shows because <laughs> I haven't actually seen you guys live yet. So, 
I will make it down to at least normally, one of these. Normally it's some good fun. We've normally got like yeah, our normal crowd there. I mean, we've like we've packed out like uh, places like Portland's before. Um, people that come see us, they come back for more and like they yeah. So we'll always we hope, give we hope, you a good show. If you have a listen to us, you feel the same and you want to come see us. Yeah, that'd be really, that'd be really awesome. Okay, so we're gonna end the show. We're gonna play it one of your songs. Would you like to introduce it for us? Sure. Uh, You're going to play a track of ours called Honestly, Honesty Doesn't Cost a Thing. That's the end of the show. 
You can find me on facebook.com forward slash local distortion podcast and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It has the same name, doesn't have a URL yet. I need more subscribers, so please subscribe. 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 And I'll have more interviews, more live performances from my guests in the future. So, yeah, come check it out. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you very thank much for having us. Cheers. Statues thank out. <laughs> thank you for listening. Really hard to find strawberries at Strawberry Fair. You you know that. Mm. It's pretty much impossible. What's up with that? <laughs>